with me. I'll kind of go back and forth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first CEO check-in. This is a place for us to gather as women business owners and share best practices and react, you know, in real time to what's happening. I know that somebody made the joke that uh, last week felt like the longest year ever because so much has changed in just one week where we're now all working from home, trying to figure out how to take care of our families, our teams, be leaders during this crisis. Also, how do we make sure we protect our businesses? What resources do we have access to? So, you know, no one of us can figure this out by ourselves, but we have a collective, incredibly smart group of women across the country. And I wanted to create a place for us to support each other, hi Lisa, and make sure that we have access to all the best practices. So the point of the CEO check-in is to help you with really three things. You know, I love three things. It's how to make sure you keep a strong mindset because everyone's counting on you to stay positive, to stay brave, and I wanna help you with that. I have a lot of resources to share with you and I'm gonna share one today. We'll do one mindset teaching each time. The second thing is how do we share the best practices? I'm getting women sending me things from all over the country of how they're handling this, and I wanna make sure that we don't have to reinvent any wheels. Um, in, on my team, we created some best practices for working remotely so that there's more clarity around who approves things and all that, so I'd love to share that with you and I will. And then the last thing is, how can we help each other get through this time and feel the support of this community? So that's really gonna be our goals on these CEO check-ins. We're not gonna share like the latest news on the coronavirus because that's on the media all day long and that's not what this is for. This is really for you to show up as a business owner and get the support and the love of other women who are in the exact same shoes you are and make sure that we protect your business during this time. You are not alone. Thank you, Erin, for using that phrase, which I think I also heard in um, Dear Evan Hansen, and let's give a shout out to all the people on Broadway who can't go to their jobs right now. We're certainly not the only ones being impacted by this. So you're not alone. We're all in this together. If you're just joining us, um, I'm gonna be doing a quick mindset teaching, then I'm gonna share some tips, and then we're gonna open it up to questions because I'm sure everyone has the same questions right now. How do I bring my business online? What can I do to protect my team? Are we going to have a recession? What does that mean for my business, et cetera? So I'll do some live coaching on this call and we have until 1230. So again, thanks for joining us. And let me start with a little mindset teaching. So we can't change what's happening right now, right? We have zero control over the new things that are being decided every day, whether it's that all of a sudden we can't go out or, you know, is there going to be an opportunity to get relief from the government? We don't know. None of that we have control over. The only thing we really have control over is our attitude. So I really want to encourage us all to use our mindset best practices. And the number one antidote to anxiety is, I have a little visual here, gratitude. So you might already have a gratitude practice, like just noticing when things go right or trying to focus on the good in your life. But this would be a time to up your gratitude practice. This is my journal that I use every night and I write like six or seven things that went really well that day. And it can be really tiny things um, from good turnout and great energy at my event to bigger things like, um, let's see, Aaron said yes to joining the board or Maddie handled our party with grace and ease tonight. Things like that, whatever made me feel good that day. And going to sleep every night writing down these things that made you happy is a great way to retrain your brain to what is good because there's still so many amazing things happening and we want to make sure that we stay strong and positive quick mindset reminder when you're in that place of fear and panic you can't find the solutions to the problems and there are always solutions so anything you can do to stay joyful i just bought myself a big bunch of roses this morning they're in my apartment I bought myself this really cool dry erase board that makes me really happy that I posted about on Instagram yesterday. Um, here's another way you can do gratitude. You don't have to have a big book like that. You can use a little journal. I love these Go uh, Think Big notebooks from my friend at Jay Faulkner. You can order these online. They fit right in your purse. And uh, I bring them to any event and just kind of write what the event was. But you could turn one of these into a gratitude journal. So I'd really like to encourage you to start a gratitude practice today where every night you write down six to eight things you're grateful for. 
Yes, Join Strata said, retrain your brain. That's right. We have about 50,000 thoughts a day, every day. That's a lot of thoughts. And a full 70% of them are negative. So our brain is very good at going to negative all by itself. But when you study mindset, you realize you really can retrain it. Oh, I see people wanting to be in the live video. Fantastic. We're going to do that in a minute. Um, if you're just joining us, this is the CEO check-in. It's for women entrepreneurs across the country who want to get access to mindset tips to stay strong and brave during this time, the best practices that other women CEOs are using, and also resources to keep growing our business because business is not going to stop. We're going to keep doing our businesses. We're just going to figure out how to bring them online. And I'm almost done with my teaching, and then I want to share a couple resources we have for you here at Million Dollar Women to help you with your businesses. So I wanted to just break this down with, for you in very simple terms of what you should and should not be doing right now. Because I know that when I get into a state of fear or overwhelm, it's hard to know what to do first. I wrote about that in my email this morning. What do you do first on a day like today? So here's just a little cheat sheet of what you should be doing. So you should be doing pivoting, planning, and problem solving. This is really what the main focus should be right now. And if you don't have something to write notes, I would get a pen and paper and just write some of these things down. So pivot, plan, and problem solve. This is what we're doing at Million Dollar Women. So the pivot is whatever you are about to do in person is now going to happen online. So how can you map out what that looks like? We were about to have a summit for 300 women at Microsoft Conference Center, our fourth annual, and we pivoted immediately to turning it into an online slash offline summit. But now with the news from the CDC about no gathering for eight weeks, it'll be fully online. But we made that pivot very quickly. And I invite you to quickly pivot your business to moving anything offline to online. The second thing is to plan because this is going to be with us for quite some time. And maybe you've been saying for a long time, oh, I should really up my online presence. Oh, I should really figure out how to do social media. Oh, it'd be great to try out doing webinars. Well, this is your time to start planning for how you're going to do business in a new way. You know, we've been running an online business school for four and a half years. So we live online, which is why we were very ready to do this and are honored to be able to gather this community like we are. This is not a big deal for us. We do this all the time. But if you haven't been working online, let's say you're a stylist and you maybe go to people's houses or you uh, have a massage parlor and people come to you and that's not possible anymore. How can you plan for this lasting six months, a year, and what does that new business look like, that new business model? And the last thing is problem solve. And what problem solving is about is going back to first principles. Whenever things go wrong, I like to go back to first principles. And what I mean by that is, what are we as entrepreneurs? At the core, we are problem solvers. People have problems and they pay us to solve them, right? I'm a business coach. People want to grow their business. They're not quite sure how to do it. They pay me to help them solve that problem. Uh, my friends Lisa and Aaliyah, who are stylists, work with people like me who are good at other things but not good at fashion, and we need them to solve that problem for us. So I want you to think about what is the problem that your business solves and how can you still solve it but just in a different way now, online. So for instance, let's say you were the owner of that massage parlor and you used to have this really profitable package where couples would come in and get a massage together and you charge them $300 for an hour for this couple to get a massage together. Super popular, what are you gonna do now? No one can come in. Well, guess what? Couples still need to relax together. They still have the problem that they wanna do fun things together. So maybe you could create an online program that helps couples who are now, by the way, shut inside and they better really like each other because they're going to be inside for a long time. Maybe you could teach them how to give each other a massage. Maybe you could create a whole kit that's like date night at home, right? Where they learn to massage each other. I'm just saying the problems we're solving are not going away, but the way we're going to solve them might have to change. So do pivot, plan, and problem solve starting today. And if you want, you can get a big dry erase board like I did and five markers. I got it at Staples for 30 bucks or something and it makes me super happy to use it. But yes, I'm very type A, so that kind of thing has always made me happy, but feel free to join me. Um, okay, so then here's what not to do because there are people doing things we should not do too. Isolate, ruminate, and catastrophize. Do not isolate, ruminate, and catastrophize. Isolate is when you don't reach out to other people. Sure, we're stuck at home, 
but that doesn't mean that you should not call your friends, not have FaceTime cocktails with people you love. Do anything you can not to isolate. That's really important. The second thing is don't ruminate. I don't know if you've encountered this word before, but it's when you sort of dwell on what's wrong. Like, oh, and now I can't go out. And then I'm also going to gain weight because I've got my freezer stocked with, with ice cream and I seem to be eating all day long. And then the other thing is that I was just about to hit my stride in my business and now nothing's working. That's ruminating. It's a psychological term. And if you catch yourself doing it, I want you to stop and say, wait, I'm ruminating. This is not helpful. Right. We know that what need what we need now is to stay strong, to stay positive and to look for solutions. And those will never come out of ruminating. So no ruminating. And the last one is no catastrophizing. Catastrophizing is when you make assumptions that everything is going to turn out the worst it could possibly be. We all know someone like this, and you might even have someone in your family doing this, right? They've like, they're like stocked up for Armageddon. They're talking about what's gonna happen if we all have to flee you know, the country. That's catastrophizing. Let's just go with the information we have today. And every day we can, well, we're gonna check in with each other three days a week for starters. We'll always be here. Uh, you can also watch these videos. We're recording them in Facebook. You can go to my Jay Pinsler author page and they're recorded. And we're going to just keep reacting as we have information. Right now, our job is to plan, pivot, plan, and problem solve. So let's help each other do that. Okay, I'm going to get into uh, coaching a couple people live now. I want to hear what your number one concern is. And if you're just joining us, this is CEO check-in for women across the country, small business owners who want help with mindset, who want to share best practices and figure out to keep how to keep growing and having thriving businesses even during this time. So we're going to meet three times a week. This is just the beginning. It's not all going to happen today, but we're going to be here for you at Million Dollar Women. So I'm going to share one resource we created before I do my live coaching. Hey, Laura. Hey, Stephanie. Um, we've created a Google Drive folder called CEO Check-In Resources, and we're putting in there, and you all have access to it, just um, email me and Maddie. We're taking requests at maddie at juliapim.com. Um, and maybe I can put that in here. Let's see if I can. Maddie at juliapim.com. And what's going to be in this folder is best practices that women CEOs are using across the country. One of my coaching clients, Heidi, has a food business. And she created some amazing guidelines for how her team can stay healthy and has shared them with us. So those will be in the folder. Our uh, sponsor of the summit, Content Bacon, which creates content for people to shine online. Wendy Lieber, the CEO, called me up right away and said, how can I help? And so she is offering up three free documents that we're going to put in this Google folder. And one is an assessment of how you look online, how to assess whether you are online ready, right? Because that's how everyone's going to find you now and for the foreseeable future. She's also sharing a webinar toolkit. How do you run a successful webinar? For a lot of people, doing a webinar is like, oh, I'll get to that eventually, but now you're gonna get to it now, probably. So we'll have a free um, FAQ about how to run a webinar. And then the last one is, how do you do a content strategy roadmap? Content Bacon is an expert in helping their clients figure out what content they need to create for which channels, from blogs to Facebook to Instagram to Twitter, I know it can be overwhelming to try to figure out, you know, which is most important, where do I start? So they're going to share a content strategy roadmap. We're reaching out to all of our sponsors of the summit. We have amazing sponsors who all can help you. And they're going to be providing free resources that we will put in that Google folder. We also put our own SOP here at Million Dollar Women, our standard operating procedure for how to work remotely. So you can find that and then create one for you and your own team. Okay, I want to get started with the live questions because we have about 15 minutes left. So let's see, who has a question or wants to be coached live? I'm really interested in what is your number one concern right now and how can I help you with that? And I see that Sophia was asking a question. So Sophia, if you want to come on, I can take your question. Hi, Sophia. She's coming on live. Oh, give it a minute. If you're just joining us, this is CEO Check-In. It's a place for women entrepreneurs from across the country to get help with mindset, 
share best practices, and figure out how to keep scaling up our businesses during this time so that we're able to keep scaling and keep growing despite all the changes. I'm not able to get, Stephanie, is that you? Uh, it wasn't really loading, so I'm thinking maybe I need to try someone else. Um, or Stephanie, if you could type your question in, that would be fantastic. Oh, sorry, Sophie. All right, let's see if we have somebody else. Hello, Jen. Hello, Shaime. Hello, Roseanne. Um, if somebody else wants to pop on, I can do some live coaching. I'm curious about what is your number one challenge right now in getting through this time? Is it a concern about should I let go of my team? Is it a concern about is there a recession coming? Is it a concern about how do I do this very offline thing I've been doing for years? How do I bring that online? What does that look like? Okay, here's somebody who has requested coaching. Uh, let's go to Tara. And if I don't answer your question, please do send it through in the comments because I can get to it next time on Wednesday. Um, I also can answer some questions in the Facebook group, in the Facebook um, live chat. Okay, we are trying to get Tara on. Let's see if technology is our friend. She's not quite on yet. So one thing I'm hearing a lot of people asking about is how do I comfort my team? And there's a, that's a great question because, oh, and here's another question that popped up. So how to comfort your team. I did do a post the other day about how do you, thank you, I'm going to get to that in a minute, Body Positive Bootcamp, about should I apply for grants. Um, we're going to be, oh, hi, Edwin. Thanks for joining us. In terms of how do you talk to your team, we, I did a whole video the other day about how to lessen anxiety. It's in YouTube. So I would go to my YouTube channel and watch that. There's a four-step process to lessening anxiety that can, you can use with any team member because the most important thing right now is to keep working. We don't want our team members to lose their jobs. We want to keep delivering great products and services to our clients. So we really need to just be focusing on the three things I mentioned earlier, which is pivot, plan, and problem solve. And if people are in a bad state, they can't do that. So I would highly suggest you use that. Um, someone's asking about, should I apply for grants? That's a great question. I don't know yet of any grants available, but we're getting information. You know, We have a great advisory council and board, and I'm sure this minute grants are available. I will know about it, and I will post it in our Google Drive folder. And again, if you want access to that, please just email maddie at juliapim.com so you can get access to it. So let's see, how do you cut through the noise with your webinar? Well, one of the ways is to really up your thought leadership online. So we know that advertising teaches that you have to touch someone like over 10 times before they actually pay attention to you, right? Think about it in your own life. How many times have you heard of someone or heard of a book and you do absolutely nothing about it? But then finally, you've heard about it so many times or from such a trusted source that you eventually do click on it find out about it, email someone. So in terms of how you can cut through the noise with your webinar, it's not just about advertising your webinar, it's about all the places you show up as a thought leader. And that's one of the reasons we're focusing on thought leadership this year at the summit. We were already gonna focus on it, but it's even more important. And please join us for that, the whole thing's gonna be online. And um, Wendy Lieber from Content Bacon, when I, we started working with her many years ago, it's one of the reasons she's a sponsor, is she helped us understand that we needed to blog, we needed to be on social media, we needed to make videos. Now, I know you can't do all these things at once, but don't get into paralysis of overwhelm where you don't do any of them. I would say pick a couple of channels that you're most comfortable with, because if you don't like doing it, you're not going to do it, right? Don't pick video if you hate seeing yourself on video but maybe you like to write. So my, maybe you start a blog now and you start sharing tips about your expertise because you're all really good at what you do. So I'd like you to start sharing your expertise with your customers and clients so that they can see that you rise above the noise. You can make blog, you can write blog posts, you can do social media posts, and the webinar is a great place to feed all those people once you've upped your thought leadership. I would say that if you just go out of the gate this minute with a webinar, you might not have that many people on it, right? If you haven't built up that social media traction. So a good first step is to look at some people who are really good at doing webinars, follow some coaches, follow some people who have caught your attention and see how they're doing it. I know that when we found our new Facebook ads company, 
it was partly because the woman who runs it had messaged me multiple times on LinkedIn. And the first time she messaged me, I really wasn't looking for a Facebook ads person, but I liked her style and it was sassy. And then the second and third time she caught my attention by offering some free advice. And then by the time she messaged me, I think it was the seventh time I was looking for a Facebook person and I actually reached out to her. So how can you do that in your own business? How can you stay on people's radars in a way that is not annoying, that is actually adding value so that when they're ready for you, you're right there? Because as we said earlier, you're still a problem solver and people are still having the problem that you can solve. So it's just about changing the delivery mechanism for how they find you. Hi, Renata. Nice to see you. Uh, let's see. We have a request from breathe with Sheena. Let's see if we can get you into the Instagram. I wonder if everybody's doing Instagram live and it's using up all the bandwidth or something, but hopefully, ah, it worked. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, we've all got babies and dogs and everybody in the room now. My kids are coming back soon. They've been away with my ex-husband, but they're coming back this afternoon. I can't wait to see them. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling from Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Um, and um, I currently have a like, email marketing business that's going well, and clients for that as well. But I was actually in the process of launching two business, um, my leadership business. Okay. Um, and right now, with everything going on, I'm just kind of like hesitant. Um, so I guess I'm just kind of curious around that, which I need. I like the free offering mode. I mean, the reason we set up these free check-ins is that, you know, there is such a thing as kind of mass mentality, right? If everybody's doing something, then everyone follows along. So right now, everyone's feeling scared. And so no one's really spending money right now. Look, I, I'm older than you, I think, by a tiny bit. And I lived through 9-11. Um, I lived through the recession. I built my first business in the recession. So I know this feeling that we have now, it's familiar to me of like everybody's kind of in freeze mode. You know, it's like musical chairs and the music just stopped, right? We're all like freeze. So I think it'd be very hard to get people to spend money right now unless you have a problem that's really acute for them. Like you did say you do email marketing. All these business owners have to figure out, right, how they're going to be much more email marketing savvy. At the same time, people are afraid to spend money. So I would highly suggest that you offer free value and whatever that is, whatever you come up with might be a great new addition to your offerings. Hi, Emmett. I'll see you soon. That's my son. Um, so maybe like, what do you think is something you could offer for free right now that would be a value to people? I like that. So, so free Zoom meditation. So you you lead meditations. That's what you do for a living. Yeah. Wonder. And usually people come to you in a yoga studio or something. Or well, what's actually interesting is I do it through Zoom anyway. Oh. Um, but I haven't specifically done it this year for this business. So. Well, actually, then I think you're in a great position in the sense that you already know how Zoom works. You're very Zoom savvy, right? So maybe it's about communicating to your exist. I would start with your existing clients, right? Because they know you and love you and send something out saying, you know, I know this is a hard time. And so I'm making available for free this, you know, meditation minute, maybe you want to call it, right? Like take a minute for you. You're managing all these other people and give them access for free. And then as they start to like it, they can also share it with other people. And you can ultimately, when things go back to normal, right, turn this into some kind of a paid offering. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll become like a subscription or something, right? This is the whole pivot that I was talking about is like some of our businesses are just going to look very different, right? Yeah. As we move through this. So this is a chance to experiment and to play. It's not a chance that we asked for, <laughs> but now that it's here, right? It's like all those ideas you had, even for us, frankly, with the Million Dollar Women Summit, for years now we've been saying, oh, we should live stream it. We really should find a way to do it so everyone can participate remotely. So this is a chance to try out those ideas. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you doing these sessions. I think that's really uh, helpful. 
My pleasure. I hope you'll join us again on Wednesday and email maddie at juliapim.com to get access to the Google Drive folder so you can get all of these resources. There might be something in there that, that works for your business or if you find something that's working, please send it to us and we'll put it in the Google Drive and share it with everyone. Stay safe. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Okay, we definitely have time for one more before we all have to go back to running our businesses and figuring out how to do the uh, pivot, plan, and problem solve. And I would encourage you to reach out to other women entrepreneurs because we often work alone as entrepreneurs. And so you probably know a woman entrepreneur who is trying to figure out what's next and who's anxious and scared. So please let her know that this exists for her. Hey, Erin and hey, Rabia, and that she can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for these check-ins. As things evolve, we'll be sharing new best practices. If grants become available for small businesses, we'll be sharing that. And uh, so, you know, you're not alone. That's the most important thing. And do this and do not do that. If you're just joining us, no isolating, ruminating, or catastrophizing. These things do not lead to a good, strong, healthy, happy mindset or to more business. Once we're in a good place, then we can find new solutions for our businesses. So if there are no further questions, I'm going to wrap us up. Um, the next steps for everybody is to help spread the word about these CEO check-ins to anyone who needs it and look out for best practices. I will also say that in our Google Drive folder, we'll be sharing how to work with your team remotely, what are some best ways to manage your team around coronavirus, and as we get new information and new best practices that you all send in, we'll be adding them to the Google folder so that you can all have access to them. We are also considering um, taking this online onto, well, we are online, but taking this onto Zoom. So if you would like to have a Zoom meeting in addition to this or instead of this, we're very open to the format. Uh, we're ready to pivot quickly too here. So the main thing is to keep us all connected and to keep sharing best practices and make sure that we stay in a really strong, positive state. I know that for me, it's very um, inspiring to be part of this community of smart, driven women. I love leading you and I also love being part of you. So thank you for joining us today. This was certainly uplifting for me to be able to bring us together and know that we have this place that we can connect on a regular basis. Email maddie at juliapim.com for the folder access or for any ideas you have. And we'll be gathering new information from our sponsors and partners that we can share with you in that folder. So until Wednesday, stay safe, stay brave, and we're all with you here at Million Dollar Women and your entrepreneurial sisters across the country. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye, everyone.